Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by VintageElectronicsGeek.com. I'm your host, Who Really Cares? But for those that do, it's Jack. There you go. You've been forewarned. In a previous video, earlier video, I showed you this device right here. That I purchased it and I was looking forward to using it. Well, today is its reckoning day. We are actually going to tear this apart, look at it, and then kindly put it back together. No, we're going to tear it apart. We're going to inspect uh, the caps and resistors and all that good junk. And when I say we, I mean you. I'm going to kick back and watch kind of like what you're doing. Get me a pizza, will you? All right, just kidding. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to tear this apart. We're going to look at it, uh, service what we can service. Now, I do have future plans where I will tear this apart. As you remember, the uh, one of the digits does not work adequately. I have new digits on order and as soon as they come in we will try this apart again to fix it well try to fix it anyway maybe we might break it who knows and i could see another video happening down the road sometime that there's a modification that you could add a um, 10 kilohertz input bnc connection on the back of this and in the owner's manual Syncore shows you how to do that. It's it's a fairly simple mod. Probably the more challenge, the the more time-consuming aspect of that is going to be drilling the hole, mounting the uh, BNC connection, and and it's essentially almost that straightforward. This device was made sometime about 1985. I do not have a hardcore affirmative date on it, but it's it's somewhere in that time spectrum. Not sure what it sold for, but I'm sure it sold for money. This is a very cool frequency counter. I bought this to couple with my frequency generator. I already have a frequency counter on my bench. I have a liter uh, one gigahertz freak counter and it works just fine. I have not a problem, but there's been times where I've needed to have that frequency counter connected to multiple devices at once. So that's where this came in, is going to come in handy is for that. What are those scenarios you're thinking? Well, if I could tell you, I would. Let's see. Have one connected to the uh, frequency generator so you know what frequency you're, you're, you're at. And then I guess for the laze, laziness aspect of it, you could see what's happening on the other end. I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm busy. Anyway, the, uh, the handle here on the side is I think also bent to some degree this is really challenging to move it's either that or it's tightened so we're going to try to figure out what's going on with that and, and make it a little bit easier I don't think it would be quite so hard or should be so hard to um, move as far as opening it is concerned we've got four screws on either side and it appears that's it so with that said let's do it have it open and a couple of things I've noticed is one we have must have some kind of water condensation or something at one time got in there that's the only thing I could think of The other thing I notice is that these handles does not have a nut or a screw that you could tighten these. These are actually pop riveted in. So I will take some oil, some uh, three in one oil or whatever it is I got up there and shoot down into there and see if that will loosen that up any. And yeah, the handles do appear to be a little, a little compressed. You can see right here. Let me bump in. So here you can see where the handle is actually making contact with the, the face of the meter. And down here you can see the pop rivet. This white box that you're looking at in the center of your screen with the broken rubber band, that is the heater box. That's um, Inside that box there's going to be a crystal and this is how the whole thing keeps itself warm in the dead of winter. 
because remember it's highly sensitive. I want to show you this part of it. I do want to bring you to this part of the board. As you can see, we do have a label right there in your upper left hand corner, a original label from Syncor with all the signatures who signed off on this. Now, if you look at the, the bottom right of that sticker, you see that number 66K187. If we are to believe that the 187 aspect of that is a date code, then we have an idea of when this was made. January of 87. Now I have not looked at all the IC chips in this, but I did see a few that appeared that it might have an 86 on them date code. Not sure. I'll see if I can do more research now that I have a, a closer date. Also the other thing to bring to your attention is a, that big fat capacitor down there at the bottom. That might have a problem. I don't know. I know you can't see it there, but his buddy looks to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and recap this entire thing. There is one capacitor that I may have an issue because it may be a, a heavier value than I have. I don't know until I can pull it out. And it's that one right there in the back. That comes off of the transformer. So I, I don't know what its real value is. I haven't looked at the uh, SAMs on it. I'm just going to play it as I go. Otherwise, there's really not a whole lot of electrolytic capacitors. We got this one down here. And, uh, well, honestly, that's the only ones that I'm seeing right off the top of my head is, is those four. There may be some on the, uh, the face plate. So I'm not seeing any. And I see none here. I've got this big fat capacitor right here. I cannot get it out of this um, holder. I think what's happening is it's too far down the screen that you really can't see it and you're saying, dude, zoom in. Let's see what you're talking about. Okay, how's that? So we got this capacitor here and you, look, my hand's in the way. Now you really can't see. That one right there. Can't see the value. I can't get it out of there. I think, I think this here is uh, double back tape and it's sticking to the holder and the uh, condenser. And you probably can't see it in your view, so let me see if I can get it up here. You see the holder is riveted in, so it's not like something I could just unscrew and, and do. The face I have tore off. And that'll give me a chance to sit down and polish this up and clean that up. I, I don't think you could see it too well in your view. Let me, let me zoom in there. You can see how filthy that is. There you go. I want to try to polish all that stuff off the glass. When you're pulling the display board out of here, there's going to be four screws in each corner. It took me a while to figure this out. I thought, you know, the casing, uh, I thought this here separated and then you gained access from underneath, but it's not. This is one solid piece, or at least one piece that don't come apart. I tried. When you remove the screws out of here, up underneath the display board, which we'll get to here in just a minute, this is going to be the tricky part because they've got these little 22 shells. No, they're little um, spacers that go in between the display board and the casing. And speaking of the LED board, here it is. I 
as you can see one of these legs broke off so I'm going to have to try gluing that back on which would be nice to have the uh, oh no I don't the bezel it broke off the bezel these bulbs right here these are neon and here's the back side these plugs you don't have to worry they only go into one slot so that's kind of cool and here's a closer look at the board I've done a visual inspection on the board this and the main board everything looks okay for the most part I see a few little splotches of solder that I'll pick off and in fact let me uh, swing this around see if I could zoom in tighter as you can see that right there is a wire bent over from the other side and then just laid down onto the corresponding trace which as you see goes to that pin right there or the one next to it anyway so I'll snip that off I'll confirm that it don't belong there I'll snip it off I think those legs on these transistors are gold plated so my next steps is I'm going to go through and I'm going to check all the components on this board make sure everything is where it should be and I'm going to replace the capacitors off the main board the electrolytics